Hey everyone, Paul Daniels here in another daily fix. So yes, welcome back to your hippie, long-haired, man-child, face-looking Australian down under, doesn't exist, not on the flat earth as world person. So we've got another A1466 and it's also coming up like the other one where it gives it the MagSafe and nothing else. Nothing boots, no fan spin, nothing. Or at least I don't think it does give fan spin, I haven't checked with the back off yet. Anyway, guess we'll have a look. Try to get it done before I turn into a little puddle of sweat in this house because it is hot today, but I've got to get these jobs done. Let's get to it. Ooh, we got the playing it risky today. We got the uh, thingy jig. What do you call that thing? The solid state drive. That's right. Yes. Better take the battery off too. Take the solid state out. All right. Let's just verify the situation. Make safe in, instantly green. No fan spin. Let's see what we got for voltage. Oof, I feel all uncoordinated there. Very uncoordinated. What have we got? G3 heart, 8.58. Okay, so we definitely got SMC. Alright, let's get the battery out. Same old thing. Everything looks quite clear on this again. There's a bit of muck actually down there. Alright, let's have a look on the microscope. Just a clump of junk. Here I was thinking it was something else. A glitter. Always the frickin' glitter. And balls. What concerns me here is that all of these items have that sheen residue around them so it's been cleaned at some point by something which makes me wonder if uh, when I pull this board out I'm going to be confronted with the uh, Apple refurb sticker on it because yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing anything obvious here this is a 165 board it's interesting there's a scratch along there too see this This board has been handled somewhere. Alright, we're taking it out. Still can't see any marks under here. This could be a tricky one. What if I should have checked with a different DC in board? Uh, let's have a look anyway. There we go, there we go. I mean, I'm not saying this is the fault, but there's certainly an indication of trouble. Uh, that look a little gnarly. Alright. I don't seem to have my red pen with me. It seems like my death pen has been banned from me. But we'll put green on there, and that's good enough. Looks like a little, little egg sack or something. It's almost like there's a creature in there. Scary. Be an alien. Well, so far, that's our only hint. Let's have a look at those. Alright, so what we're after are uh, these two here, I'm pretty sure. Or was it? I oh, don't know, no. These ones here. Yes. Specifically this. VCCSO. Okay, so that's all VCCSO. Hmm. Let's have a look at the resistance on that. There's not much point in me doing diode mode on those because they are going to be very low. So in this case we'll do resistance. It's not the kind of reading I'd expect. Okay, 
37, that is actually quite a bit lower than it should be. What about you? Let's get a known working and have a look. Alright, this is a known working one, and it's also a 165. Let's see how they compare. So we definitely got problems there. No matter how you cut it, that's just way too low. So now given that we've got corrosion on those two, it's probably not a bad idea. We should remove them and maybe we can get lucky. Because the main thing that's on my mind is that maybe it's too late. And something's happened to the CVU and it's all dead. But we'll take those two caps, maybe three caps off. Let's see if we get any improvements. Because that resistance is just way too low. This is going to be a little bit tricky. Because these caps, I mean, they're right beneath the CPU. So they're very disinclined to come off because of the amount of absorbing of heat that's happening. I'm just going to wait for that to cool down a little bit. Let's have a look at the caps that we just took off. See if we can see any physical defects in them. Wow, the tweezers have got a physical defect. So I can't see any cracking on that one. Because that's usually the sign that you've got a cap that's shorted out as they very often have little fracture lines through them. I mean it's not always but it's pretty common. Yeah, can't see anything on that. Right, let's check our resistance. Let's see if we're uh, closer to nine. Bloody trucks. Well, we're certainly higher. We're at 4.95. As it cools down, it's probably going to pick up. No, it's still picking up. Oh, we might have gotten lucky. Well, I'm an idiot. Why don't we just check the caps? I mean, it makes sense, doesn't it? So, you've got the... One of these could be a buzz one. So, we'll go switch on to diode mode. Oh, I think we found our little piece of wire that's pretending to be a cap. Yep, hello you. You're not. It's interesting, the one that looks really dodgy is actually okay. It's trying hard not to be a wire now. Yeah. Nice try, buddy, but I've got you. I'm curious, so let's see if I can see a physical defect on it or not. I might wash it down. And uh, crud. Well, we might not ever get to know the end of that story now, because <laughs> it just flew off somewhere. The guilty part, oh, the guilty party gets caught. You have been caught. We'll put you down there. When it's on the silicon mat, it's a little less able to run. Oh yeah, there's the floor. Yep. You can see it right there clear as day. Maybe I need to put this on a bit of a darker background. There we go. Yep, 
Yeah, you can see that definitely fractured there. It's just a little harder to spot. So that's our killer. Alright, so I want to find out what those are. And they're all 10 microfarad, 4 volt, 402s. Alright, well I didn't have any of the ones I wanted in 4 volt. I only had them in 6 volt 3. So we'll just take these ones. Probably shouldn't take as long to get this one off because this is a donor board and it does not have a CPU on it. By the way, the, the 639 uh, refurb sticker that I'm talking about, this is what um, actually Duke, Lewis Rossman's Duke, mentioned. See this sticker here? It's got 639. From what he's said, it would appear that that generally is an indicator that it's a refurb board. Meaning at some point it's gone back to Apple or been processed by one of Apple's groups or contractors or whatever and then put back in as a new board according to Duke but I'm willing to trust that coming from Duke ah jeez I keep losing my caps yeah I don't know where that went we'll just take another one they're all the same well, the fun thing here is going to be getting these back on. The reason why... The reason why it's a little bit of fun is because of the thermal mass. First we need to clean up that whole area. I'm not real sure why that corrosion was there. Was it perhaps something left over from the original refurbishing? A bit of junk that when they were cleaning it up didn't come off properly. It's trying to tell me, yeah, you got all the leaded, unleaded solder off, and it's like, no, I haven't. Yeah. Alright, it's looking better. Son of a... You better not be that cracked one. Let's check that diode reading, the ohm reading. Two and a half, that's fine. Like I said, we're running really hot there. Right, let's see if we've had any better luck here. Hoping the whole CPU system will be cooled down a bit enough. So there's a fair bit of heat required to get those caps to sit in. Ah, there it goes. Green light. Oh, fan spin! 
Okay, this is the 165, so it's not going to go through the cycles like the 34, 37. I'd be curious to see if we can get a USB stick to light up for us. Alright, let's try a USB stick and you're not the right way up. And we've got blinking, that means the CPU is alive and accessing it. So there you have it. We got lucky again. Two in a row now. Winning. Alright, we got lucky. Two in a row. That's nice. And they were pretty straightforward jobs, but it was a case of looking for that odd thing out and um, giving it a shot. So I really wasn't expecting that uh, cap to be dead. I mean, it was just a little bit of grunge around it and I couldn't see any of the cracks or anything on it. So maybe they're actually on the underside when it was still stuck on the board. But yeah, it gives you, uh, gives you a good idea of why the philosophy of not washing the boards or cleaning the boards before you look at them is so important. Um, I can understand on iPhones why it's important useful to wash them because it's just the parts are just so much smaller but on the macbook boards you really do need to look out for those hints as uh, mr rossman often says and in this case it was only a tiny hint but it was all we needed we took the chance uh, tried our luck took those caps off and what do you know we got lucky so yeah going to be another heavy customer i'm certainly going to be happy because i get paid and anyway leave it at that you all take care i'll see you next time